Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. I had a request to make a video to show how I put the facing on this little wall hanging. Well, this is the first time I put a facing on the quilt. I have watched dozens of YouTube videos, so that makes me a professional now, right? Sometimes when you're making a wall hanging like this one or like the rooster that you've seen behind me, you don't want to actually put a binding on it. You want it to just like, sometimes you just want your projects to flow right off of the quilt. And like, yeah, I have the quilting that comes off of here. But when you're making things like art quilts and wall hanging, sometimes you don't want that extra bulk. You could do a single fold binding on that. And I do do that a lot on say, uh, mug rugs and pot holders and stuff sometimes you just want a really thin binding on it because it's not something that's going to get used on a bed and dragged around by a child unless you're making a doll quilt of course so it doesn't have to be super sturdy and even if you use the same color fabric you still have that extra bulk there and you can kind of see where it borders the quilt so i went with the quilt facing on this one so basically a quilt facing is just a binding that's brought to the back of the quilt where you don't see any of it since I said, this is the first time I did a quilt facing, so I have learned a couple things since doing this one. There are several techniques out there you could find on YouTube and in the blog world. And I kind of narrowed it down to the two that I like, and let me show you how those work. By the way, this is the last time you're going to see this mini quilt because it's going to be shipped out to Aileen because she won the 5K giveaway. Yay! So I have two separate examples here today. There was a quilt along, like a block of the month on Facebook. I don't know if this was, I think this one might have been two years ago. I'll try to find some of the patterns and link to them on Craftsy. When you got the, you had to the end of the month to get the pattern and it would be free. And then afterwards, it's only like a dollar or two. And I think we're on a, I want to say we're on our third year of doing the block of the months. But anyways, this was one of them. I only got as far as making the one block. Yeah. I don't really do good at block of the months. I kind of like wait till the end of it and then just make whatever I want. But this is just your standard. This one ended up coming out. I trimmed it down to about 12 and a quarter inches. And I've gone ahead and I've quilted it. And I did the, uh, the so the applique down. I just stitched it down with black thread. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about today. I'm considering this a little wall hang or an art quilt. And I'm going to put some facing on it because I want it to just be open like this. And I don't want to put any of the binding on. Plus, when you put the binding on, you're going to lose some of your your sun over here. Now, the second one, this was still, I believe this was like the first block. This one, as you can see, is I just kind of randomly took my rotary cutter and I just went like this and made some soft curves up at the top. I could have left this as a rectangle and it would have looked perfectly fine. But to show you the two different ways, I wanted to make sure I had this. Now, there could be times when you're making an art quilt and maybe... Maybe this part of the flower here is coming out off of the end of your quilt. Now that would make it a little bit harder to put binding on, but with the process we're gonna do today, it's gonna make it a lot easier just to face this, and you're still gonna have your finished wall hanging. It's gonna be nice and secure. It's still considered a quilt because it's three layers, and the stitching goes all the way through. I'm still debating on this guy though. I think I might wanna put a tongue going from the frog's mouth to the fly. But I haven't done it yet and that's something I can do afterwards. Now we're gonna start with this one first. I've decided to go ahead and use this green fabric for the, um, for the facing, just simply because one, I really love this green. I have enough of it. It kind of goes with the garden theme. And while this is kiwis and strawberries, it'll still kind of work in the back. Plus we need something with high contrast so you can see what I'm doing. There's nothing harder on a tutorial video than someone putting white on white so you can't really see what they're doing. So for this one, I decided there's no set, just like with binding, binding is a little bit different. Uh, most people do a two inch all the way up to a two and a half inch binding, but with facing, you can have it any width you want. But we're gonna, it's similar, very similar in binding where you pick your size, you cut out your strips, and then we're gonna press them in half. Now for this one, I decided I don't need a lot of facing on the back, so I went with three inch strips. 
So I cut three inch strips that are longer than the size of my little wall hanging. Now, if you want, some people like to cut them exactly. You can cut them exactly, but I tend to just stitch them on and then trim up the ends. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these over to my iron and I'm going to fold all of these strips in half. And as you can see, they're all just a little bit longer than my quilt top. A lot of people tend to go with a from the videos I've watched, I've seen several people, they like to go with a four inch strip and then when they fold it in half, it'll be down to two inches like they would regular binding. And I've also seen a lot of people, they only wanna have one inch on the back, so they might cut their strips at two, two and a half. Cause you gotta remember, we're gonna be stitching it onto the front first and it's going to be a quarter inch seam allowance. So let me go iron these and I'll show you. I hope you're going to be able to see everything okay today. It's a little bit of a gloomy day. I have the window open. I have, you know, you're probably going to hear the thunder from the rain outside. You might even be able to hear the rain going. I have overhead lights on. So we're going to do the best we ha can today, but we might have a few shadows. So we're going to take our first strip and we're going to stitch it down just like we would binding. Pick any side. The only difference is, is you're going to be stitching from one end all the way to the other. As I said, I like to just overlap my strip just a little bit, and then when I get to the end, I'll just trim off the extra. I'm not using a walking foot on my machine because I don't own one. So sometimes the, the fabric width will change a little bit. So I like to have that extra on the end just to make sure I don't come up short. And you know me, I can just put that extra into the scrap bin and everything will be fine. Just like with my binding, I'm just using a white thread. You could match it to the color of your facing strip if you'd like, but I don't see where it really matters too much because we're gonna fold it over. Okay, so I'm just gonna start at the end and with about a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to stitch this down. You can use some binder clips, the uh, those little clover clips, or you could pin this if you want, but for me it's such a small distance that I'm just going to go ahead and hold it. I'm not worrying about back stitching or anything. See, just stitched all the way down. And now I'm gonna to go to the opposite side and for this one it's the bottom and I'm going to put another one on that side. Remember, just like binding, we're going to use the open side and match it up to the edge of our little art quilt. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and trim these little edges off so that both of these pieces on the top and bottom are flush with the edge of my quilt. Now you might think that we would go ahead and press this up like this, but don't do that yet. We're going to leave this straight down and we're going to take our next, piece, our next piece of binding. Once again, the folded edge in and the open edge to the side. But here, what we're going to do, instead of starting all the way up here at the end, We're gonna put this halfway down. It doesn't have to be exact halfway, you can just eyeball it. And then we're gonna start stitching here, but our, our little facing strip is gonna be halfway down. So we will be stitching it all the way down. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna be doing the same thing and I'll show you what the end looks like when we get there. So remember, about halfway down for your piece of fabric, for your facing strip, but you're gonna start stitching all the way at the corner. Now 
Now when I get close to the end, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and trim this facing or binding strip, however you want to discuss it. I'm going to trim my little strip at halfway from the size of our facing here, just like we started in the beginning. This way, if I needed any extra, it didn't grow any longer and it didn't shrink. You can take this out of the machine if you want to, but I just whack it off. This is gonna be tucked into the corner and you're not gonna see it anyways. Just make sure you don't make it too short. And I stitched all the way off the edge. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. The open face to the edge, to fold it to the center, about halfway down. By starting it about halfway down, we're just gonna ease out all that extra bulk that's in there. Put a couple pins in if it makes you happy, it makes it easier for you. Then just stitch almost to the end. Okay, don't forget to stop. Trim it up a little. Mine's a little crooked because I waited too long to give myself enough room. Just go ahead and trim it up. There we go. Line everything back up, and away we go. Right off the edge of the quilt. Get rid of my threads. Okay, let's go take it back over to the table and we'll discuss the rest of it. As you can see, we have it all on all four sides. The top and the bottom go all the way to the edge and the two side ones, the strips only go halfway the width of your facing strips. Now what we're going to do, just like anything where you're going to flip corners out, you want to take a little bit of that extra bulk out of the corner. Now you don't have too much here because we only went a little bit to quarter inch, but what I like to do anytime I'm doing corners like this is I like to shimmy a little off of here. And then shimmy a little off of there. So it kind of just tapers down on the corners. I'll do that with all four corners. Now if you if this makes you nervous, you can go ahead and skip this step, but you are going to have a little extra bulk in your corners. And some people like to just take their corner and they'll go from stitching to stitching and just take off like that. Whichever makes you happy. It's your project. Now the next step is just to flip all of this, pop all your corners out, and flip these all to the back. Now you're still going to have to hand stitch the facing down like you would do with your binding if you know some people do machine stitch their binding down but for this you will be hand stitching it it's a very small project it's just on an art quilt you can make a facing on a king size bed if you chose to i'm not really sure that that would be something i'd want to do i'm not sure if there would be a good reason for it but if you didn't want to have those borders and you didn't want a binding right on there you could easily do that but what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be pulling this all the way to the back. So you're, you're going to be wearing right onto your quilt. So as you're using your king size quilt, you don't have the extra binding to protect it. So this tends to be mostly for smaller projects. Specifically, I think it was designed for uh, art quilts. So I have my little crochet hook. And I have a feeling, yep, I have a feeling this was going to be a little bit too thick to turn these. So I also have a double pointed knitting needle and it's just pointed on both ends. I'm going to be very careful pushing it out though, because I don't want to push through and put a hole in it. So while it's still possible for you to put a little bit of a hole in your quilt, just go gentle and kind of wiggle it just easy. So 
some people like to take their they take their seam ripper and then they just come in here and they pick it out and pull it out like that I haven't always had very good luck with that I tend to put holes in it I believe there's a special tool for doing this also but it's okay so now I'm gonna go take this over to my iron I'm gonna give it a good press and I'm gonna make sure that I roll this green all the way to the back I'd rather have a little bit of the white showing on the back than have any of the green showing on the front. I'm gonna give it a good press. Now after giving it a nice steam press, this is basically how it looks. All the facing has been pulled to the back. Now you're gonna to have to go through and just like you would when you hand, hand stitch the binding to the back of a quilt, you're gonna to have to go back through and do all that. You can see this is the spot where we went halfway. That part tucks under there, so you don't have all that extra bulk in the corner. For these, I definitely recommend, because no matter how good of a press and how much steam you use, this is kind of floppy. I would definitely recommend putting some binder clips around it, making sure you have everything pulled all the way back. So as you're going through and hand stitching, everything stays in place. And just go ahead. This is, remember this is an art quilt. If all your lines aren't perfectly square and even, it is going to be okay. It is at the back of the quilt. Just make sure none of your facing shows to the front after you stitch it down. Now, just like when you're doing a regular quilt, you can always tuck your little tag into here, your, uh, your quilt label. Oh, for some reason they always seem to go in the bottom right corner when you're looking at the back of a quilt and then you can stitch it down as you're doing that I wouldn't if, if you were going to stitch it down as you stitch the front of the facing down you need to be careful because you have to remember you've got well we got like two inches oh we have about an inch and a quarter inch and a half that's coming over the side here so you want you don't want to put this to have any of your words from your label stuck underneath there so sometimes I will usually wait and stitch it in here and then I had stitch these two sides and then add it that way and that way it tucks in there nice and evenly and that's how I would face just a regular square type of a project or a rectangle now I'm going to go ahead and end this video here uh, you guys have already seen me hand sew the back of the binding down and then I'm going to go ahead and start on this one where everything is uneven As you can see, I have the wobbly edge here. I'm gonna go ahead and start up a new video for this and I should have that uploaded for you on Sunday. All right, see you in a couple days, bye.